Join us as we look at seven stoic concepts that can help you master your emotions and navigate life's storms with confidence. Before we begin, I'd like it if you like the video so that you can support my efforts to propagate the stoic philosophy. If you are not already subscribed, I encourage you to do so and activate the bell so that you do not miss any videos. The first lesson is to understand what you have power over. Have you ever found yourself in the middle of a storm? Not the sort with rain and thunder, but the kind with life storms, unexpected events, disappointments, or abrupt changes. The Stoic philosophers of ancient Greece and Rome taught a concept that feels like a lifeline in these turbulent times, the duality of control. Consider this. You're preparing an outdoor event, and it rains despite your best efforts. You can't control the weather anymore no matter how much you want to. But how did you react to the rain? That is absolutely your choice. You might bemoan, be frustrated, or adjust by moving the event indoors or viewing the rain as a welcome change. Epictetus, a Stoic philosopher born a slave who ascended to become one of the most famous philosophers of his day, expressed it succinctly. Some things are under our control and others are not. It appears to be straightforward, doesn't it? However, inside this simplicity comes a profound understanding that has the capacity to improve our lives on a daily basis. We're in a variety of scenarios. Some we have control over, such as our daily habits, the books we read, or the company we keep. However, many are out of our reach. Global events, other people's behavior, the passage of time, and, yes, weather. This is when things become interesting. The Stoics thought that our happiness is determined not by external events, but by how we understand and respond to them. Our emotions are triggered not by the event itself, but by our interpretation of the event. Consider a time when you experienced a setback. Perhaps you did not receive the job you desired. It felt like a disaster at the time. However, as time passed, you may have recognized it was a blessing in disguise, leading you to a greater opportunity or personal improvement. But how do we make this a reality? Begin by asking yourself, is this something I can control? Take action if the answer is affirmative. If not, this is an opportunity to exercise acceptance and adaptability. We can save ourselves from unneeded agony if we fully understand and internalize this principle. We may sail through life with confidence, knowing that while we can't control the winds, we can change our sails. The duality of control is a beacon of clarity in a world that frequently feels chaotic. It reminds us to direct our efforts where they are most needed. Most importantly, we must accept the peace of knowing that some things are simply beyond our grasp. Lesson 2. Reflect before reacting. In today's digital world, where immediacy is often praised, the art of reflection can appear to be a relic of the past. Yet it is precisely this act of sitting and considering that can be our saving grace in a culture that expects instant gratification. Consider how many times we have to make decisions both major and small. The range of options is extensive, from selecting a restaurant meal to deciding on a career route. However, it is not only the magnitude of these decisions that is important, it's the approach we take to them. Let's look at a common scenario. Reading a message that hits home. Maybe it's a coworker who questions your job or a buddy who makes a casual remark. The first instinct may be defensiveness or wrath, but what if you took a step back instead of rushing headfirst into that emotional whirlpool? By allowing yourself that little detachment, you are not denying your feelings. Rather, you are enabling them to breathe and be understood. This reflective technique is not about passive acceptance or avoidance, it is about actively engaging with our thoughts and emotions. It's all about probing questions. Why did this remark have such an impact on me? What underlying ideas or events from my past are shaping my current emotions? Is my instant reaction based on the current situation or on baggage from the past? Furthermore, reflecting before reacting is a skill for developing empathy. Allowing oneself time allows us to examine the viewpoints of others. Maybe that coworker was having a bad day, or maybe that friend didn't appreciate the gravity of their comments. We open the door to understanding not only for ourselves, but also for people around us when we reflect. 
This technique can be a cornerstone of relationships. How many misunderstandings could we prevent if we stopped to think before reacting? How many bridges could have been built instead of destroyed? We gain insight, compassion, and connection in these reflective moments. Furthermore, the capacity to pause and reflect is extremely valuable in professional contexts. Leaders who think before acting are frequently more respected and effective. They are believed to be thoughtful, measured, and wise. Their conclusions, based on reflection, frequently endure the test of time. In a society that frequently feels like it's moving at breakneck pace, reflection becomes a type of revolt, a quiet but powerful declaration that we will not be carried away by the currents of immediacy. It's a commitment to ourselves, our well-being, and the quality of our interactions with the rest of the world. Reflecting before reacting is more than just a technique. It's a philosophy and style of life that values depth over breadth, comprehension over impulsiveness, and meaningful connections over brief interactions. It's an interior trip with far-reaching consequences, altering not only our reactions but also the entire fabric of our lives. Third exercise, dispassion. In a world that sometimes feels like an emotional roller coaster, the concept of cultivating dispassion may appear strange, but let us go deeper into what it genuinely means and the transforming power it possesses. Dispassion does not imply suppressing feelings or becoming apathetic to the world around us. It is about cultivating a balanced perspective and remaining calm in the face of adversity. Consider how it would feel to be able to watch events, circumstances, and even your own feelings without being overwhelmed by them. Consider the last time you viewed a riveting film. While you were immersed in the story, you felt tension, excitement, and possibly even sadness. A part of you always suspected it was all a ruse. You didn't run over to assist the hero or soothe the grieving character you saw. You were aware of it, yet you remained seated. This is the essence of practicing dispassion, being intimately connected with life, feeling its myriad emotions, but also understanding when to remain seated in your mind's theater, observing without becoming engrossed in the action. In our present day of information overload, this strategy becomes a lifeline. We are constantly assaulted with news, updates, and notifications. We would be weary if we reacted strongly to every bit of information. Dispassion acts as a buffer, allowing us to interact with the world in a more sustainable and balanced way. Dispassion is also important in interpersonal connections. We've all been in situations where discussions become heated and conflicts emerge. Dispassion can mean the difference between a productive dialogue and a harmful dispute in such situations. It enables us to listen more effectively, respond rather than react, and negotiate disagreements with grace and understanding. Self-awareness is the first step in cultivating dispassion. Checking in with ourselves on a regular basis, recognizing our emotional triggers, and understanding our patterns creates a gap between stimuli and response. There is freedom in that space to pick our reactions and act with intention rather than impulse. And contrary to popular belief, dispassion really enhances life's delights and pleasures. We can fully immerse ourselves in the trip by not being unduly connected to outcomes, relishing each moment without the continual worry of loss or change. Finding stability in an ever-changing world is the goal of practicing dispassion. It's a compass that points to inner serenity, gracefully leading us through life's various landscapes. We not only enrich our own lives by embracing this practice, but we also convey a sense of peace and clarity to people around us. Fourth lesson, ask yourself, will this matter in five years? Life is full of moments that put our patience, resilience, and perspective to the test. Our days are filled with experiences that elicit a wide range of emotions, from simple irritants like spilled coffee to more serious issues like arguments with loved ones. It's easy to get caught up in the intensity of our emotions in the heat of the moment. A missed deadline, a scathing comment, or an anniversary forgotten can feel like the end of the world. However, in five years, one strong inquiry can transform our viewpoint and provide clarity to this problem. This simple yet deep question acts as a mental time machine, bringing us to the future while also allowing us to reflect on the present. 
That heated debate or squandered chance is suddenly seen in a new light. The majority of the issues we are concerned about today will be forgotten. Consider the issues and concerns you had five years ago as footnotes in the vast tale of our lives. How many of these are still relevant today? How many have been overshadowed by fresh encounters, discoveries, and memories? This revelation can be humiliating as well as freeing. Using this question as a regular touchstone aids in the prioritization of our concerns. It helps us discern between short-term setbacks and long-term consequences. For example, while a poor day at work may feel overwhelming right now, it is only one day in the larger scheme of things. This attitude has also helped me to be resilient when faced with difficulties over the course of my work. Reminding oneself of the bigger picture can help us relax and solve problems. Rather than becoming weighed down by the issue at hand, we can strategize, adapt, and move on, knowing that time frequently provides clarity and solutions. But it's not simply about downplaying our worries. This question also motivates us to concentrate on what is genuinely important. If we want our actions and decisions to have an enduring impact, we must invest in long-term relationships, personal growth, and experiences. Will this matter in five years in a world that prioritizes the now? Is a lighthouse directing us to a life of meaning, perspective, and peace? We can negotiate life's ups and downs with grace if we return to this question on a frequent basis, directing our energy and attention to what actually matters. Fifth lesson, keep a stoic notebook. Journaling has been praised across cultures and epics as a tool for introspection, progress, and clarity, not merely as a chronicle of occurrences. With their emphasis on self-awareness and personal improvement, the Stoics were no strangers to this technique. A Stoic journal is more than just a log of daily events. It's a place for self-reflection, debate, and dissection of emotions, decisions, and reactions. It is the intersection of the external and internal worlds, where events are judged against personal values and beliefs. Consider finishing your day by telling not only what happened, but also how you reacted to it. What made a certain comment bother you? What caused that surge of happiness in the middle of a routine task? We can begin to comprehend our psyche by examining our day. We begin to recognize the factors that influence our mood, the values that drive our actions, and the routines that form our days. Marcus Aurelius, a Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher, kept a journal called Meditations. It was never intended for publication. It was a private conversation, a place for him to lead himself, to remind himself of Stoic ideas, and to handle the problems of life with wisdom. We see a man dealing with his responsibilities, feelings, and role in the universe through his works. A Stoic notebook, however, is not only useful for emperors. Setting aside time for contemplation becomes even more important in our modern lives, which are loaded with diversions and a continual flood of information. It's a daily check-in, a calming routine that provides clarity in the middle of chaos. This technique can lead to deep discoveries over time. You may find that particular events cause you stress on a regular basis, leading you to either address them or adjust your attitude. Specific techniques, such as gratitude or mindfulness, may improve your mood and outlook. The patterns that emerge can be used as a guide for personal development. Aside from providing insights, a Stoic notebook promotes accountability by requiring daily reflection. We hold ourselves responsible for our reactions and choices. It becomes more difficult to dismiss repeated errors or lapses in judgment. Rather, we are encouraged to learn, adapt, and grow. Keeping a Stoic diary is essentially like having a wise, non-judgmental friend by your side, ready to listen, reflect, and guide. It is a dedication to personal development, better understanding oneself and leading a life in accordance with one's values and principles. Sixth lesson, perceive challenges as possibilities. The world is full of difficulties. Obstacles are an integral element of the human experience, ranging from personal defeats to global upheavals. But what if, instead of seeing these difficulties as burdens, we saw them as opportunities disguised? The Stoics had a profound outlook on adversity. They thought that while we cannot always control the events that happen to us, we can control how we understand and respond to those circumstances. With this adjustment in viewpoint, 
problems are transformed from mere setbacks into useful lessons. This thought is well encapsulated by a remark from the Stoic philosopher Marcus Aurelius. Action is advanced by the hindrance to action. What gets in the way becomes the path. This means that if we choose to consider obstacles and challenges as opportunities for growth, they can propel us ahead. Consider a river that comes across a boulder. Instead of stopping, the river finds a way around the boulder, either by eroding it over time or building a new course. The boulder, which appears to be an impediment, transforms into a change agent, modifying the river's direction. Similarly, in our lives, problems can reroute our pathways, frequently leading to unexpected outcomes. A job loss, for example, can lead to a new professional path, an opportunity to upskill, or even the opportunity to establish one's own business. A failed relationship may pave the door for future personal development, self-discovery, and deeper, more meaningful connections. This stoic viewpoint also promotes resilience. When we begin to see obstacles as possibilities, we become more adaptive and eager to meet hardship head on. Rather than asking, why is this happening to me? We start to wonder, what can I learn from this? What impact will this experience have on me? Of course, this does not mean we should seek out difficulties or reject true adversity. It's about understanding that every obstacle contains potential, a seed of opportunity. We can transform barriers into stepping stones, guiding us to growth, insight, and fulfillment by nurturing this seed with a positive outlook, patience, and tenacity. Seventh lesson, practice thankfulness. Gratitude stands out as a golden thread in the great fabric of human emotions, weaving moments of joy, serenity, and perspective into our lives. While thankfulness is an emotion that can come spontaneously, the Stoics believed in making it a daily ritual to anchor oneself in the present and appreciate life's rewards. Gratitude entails more than simply saying thank you. It's a profound acknowledgement of the many forces, moments, and people who enhance our lives. It's about seeing the beauty in the ordinary, the lessons and challenges, and the transient aspect of each encounter, which makes it all the more valuable. Seneca, a great Stoic philosopher, once stated that true happiness is enjoying the present without worrying about the future. This captures the essence of thankfulness, being fully immersed in the present moment, valuing every moment, experience, and relationship. Consider some of the basic pleasures we frequently take for granted. The warmth of the sun on a cold day, the sound of laughter, a meal shared with loved ones, or the very breath that keeps us alive. We amplify the beauty and significance of these moments in our lives by pausing to recognize and enjoy them. Practicing appreciation also provides a counterbalance to the human tendency to focus on what is lacking, unfulfilled aspirations or future uncertainties. We foster happiness, lessen feelings of jealousy or anger, and improve our overall well-being by turning our emphasis on what we have rather than what we lack. How can one cultivate this discipline one would wonder. It might be as easy as beginning or closing the day by identifying three things for which you are grateful. This practice can change your mindset over time, making you more open to life's blessings and more resilient in the face of adversity. Furthermore, expressing gratitude for acts of compassion, support, or affection received from others improves connections. In a world that often emphasizes more we develop ties, foster mutual respect, and create a positive feedback loop of kindness and affection. More possessions, accomplishments, and desires. Gratitude serves as a gentle reminder of the abundance that already exists in our lives. It is a call to rejoice in the present moment, to welcome life with open arms, and to walk the road of existence with a grateful heart. As another day comes to an end, we are left with the echoes of old wisdom in our modern society. How will you apply these stoic lessons to shape your future? We'd love to hear your ideas and experiences. Please share your thoughts in the comments section, and let's continue on this road of self-discovery together. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I appreciate you joining us. Keep curious, keep grounded, and never stop seeking wisdom until next time.